Welcome to Family Bible Time. We're in Nehemiah 12, we're in Acts 22. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word, which is just wonderful. I uh, pray that you would please open our minds to it, strengthen us now to understand it. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Okay, here we go. These are the priests and the Levites who came up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel and Jeshua, Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Malak, Hattush, Shechaniah, Rehum, Maramoth, Ido, Ginnathoi, Abijah, Mijamin, Maadiah, who was not that sane, Belga, Shemaiah, Joyarib, Jediah, Salu, Amok. He ran all over the place. <laughs> Helkiah, Jediah. These were the chiefs of the priests and their brothers in the days of Jeshua. And the Levites, Jeshua, Binui, Kadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah who, with his brothers, was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. And back Bacchiah and Uni, their brothers, stood opposite them in the service. And Jeshua was the father of Joachim, Joachim the father of Eliashib, Eliashib the father of Joida, Joida the father of Jonathan, and Jonathan the father of Jedua. And in the days of Joachim were priests, heads of fathers' houses, of Sariah, Mariah, of Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Meshalem, of Amariah, Jehohanan, of Malachi, Maluki, maybe, Jonathan, of Shebaniah, Joseph, of Harim, Adna, of Mariah, Helkai, of Ido, Zechariah, of Genethon, Meshalem, of Abijah, Zikri, of Mini Amin, of Madiah, of Pil Piltai, of Bigla, Bilga, <laughs> Shemua, of Shemiah, Jehonathan, of Joyarib, Matani, of Jediah, Azi, of Salai, Kalai. <laughs> Of Amok Eba, of Hilkiah Hashabiah, of Jediah Nethanel. In the days of Eliashib, Jehoiada, Jehonan, and Jadua, the Levites, were recorded as heads of fathers' houses. So too were the priests in the reign of Darius the Persian. As for the sons of Levi, their heads of fathers' houses were written in the book of the Chronicles until the days of Johanan the son of Eliashib. And the chiefs of the Levites, Hashabiah, Sherebiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmiel, with their brothers who stood opposite them to praise and give thanks. According to the commandment of David, the man of God, watch by watch, Mataniah, Bakbakiah, Obadiah, Meshalem, Talmon, and Akub were gatekeepers standing guard at the storehouses of the gates. These were in the days of Joachim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and of Ezra, the priest and scribe. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with gladness, with thanksgivings, and with singing, with cymbals, harps, and lyres. And the sons of the singers gathered together from the district surrounding, district surrounding Jerusalem and from the villages of the Netophathites and, the, and from Beth Gilgal and from the region of Geba and Asmaveth. For the singers had built for themselves villages around Jerusalem. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves, and they purified the people, and the gates, and the wall. Then I brought the leaders of Judah up 
onto the wall and appointed two great choirs that gave thanks. One went to the south on the wall, to the Dungate, and after them went Hoshiah and half, the, half of the leaders of Judah, and Azariah, Ezra, Meshullam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, and <coughs> Jeremiah, and certain of the priests' sons with trumpets, Zechariah the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachar, the son of Asaph, and his relatives, Shemaiah, Azarel, Melalai, Gilalai, Ma'ai, Nethanel, <laughs> Judah, and Hanani, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God. And Ezra the scribe went before them. At the fountain gate they went up straight before them by the stairs of the city of David, at the ascent of the wall above the house of David, to the water gate on the east. The other choir of those who gave thanks went to the north, and I followed them with half of the people on the, the wall above the tower of the ovens to the broad wall, and above the gate of Ephraim, and by the gate of Yeshanah, and by the fish gate, and the tower of Hananel, and the tower of the hundred, to the sheep gate. And they came to a halt at the gate of the guard. So both choirs of those who gave thanks stood in the house of God, and I and half of the officials with me. And the priests, Eliakim, Messiah, Mini Amin, Micaiah, Elioni, Zechariah, and Hananiah with trumpets. Matasiah, Shemaiah, Eliezer, Uzi, Jehohanan, Malkijah, Elam, and Ezer, and the singers sang with Jezrahiah as their leader. So you know what he was, don't you? A choir director. Was he a choir master? Choir master, yeah. yeah and they offered great... Jezrahiah, I thought that he was saying he was... Uh, Jezrahiah. Uh, he was like higher. Jezrahiah. Yeah. Mm. And they offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice mm. with great joy. The women and children also rejoiced, and the joy of Jerusalem was heard far away. Mm. On that day... Men were appointed over the storerooms, the contributions, the first fruits, and the tithes, to gather into them the portions required by the law for the priests and the Levites according to the field of the towns, fields of the towns. For Judah rejoiced over the priests and the Levites who ministered, and they performed the service of their God and the service for purification of purification as did the singers and the gatekeepers, according to the command of David and his son Solomon. For long ago, in the days of David and Asaph, there were directors of the singers, and there were songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? It mm. does show choirs were a regular mm. part of the worship mm. of God. Mm -hmm. And all Israel in, those in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah gave the daily portions for the singers and the gatekeepers, and they set apart that which was for the Levites, and the Levites set apart that which was for the sons of Aaron. Oh. Okay, what do we say to all that? Amazing. All right, um, <laughs> Acts 22. <laughs> Lots of giving thanks and joy. Lots of giving thanks and joy. Wasn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. I mean, when people really want the the ministers when they want they wanted the priests they wanted the music leaders and they were willing to support them heartily it's just a wonderful time isn't it mm. right acts 22 brothers and fathers hear the defense that i now make before you who's saying this who's speaking mm. paulus paulus. <laughs> paulus, um, the prisoner. paulus the prisoner now and when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. And he said, 
I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia and brought up in this city. What, which city is it? Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Educated at the feet of Gamaliel, who was Gamaliel, one of the most famous teachers um, of the law. According to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, as all of you are this day. I persecuted this way, that was the name of Christianity at the mm -hmm. time, to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women. As the high priest and the whole council of the elders can bear me witness. From them, as in from the high priest and the elders, I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those who also who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was on my way and drew to, near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, Jesus of I am I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Rise and go into Damascus. And there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and came into Damascus. And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing by me, said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you wait? Rise and be baptised and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know <coughs> And in one synagogue after another I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Up to this word, they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. Why were they saying that? Because he said that he went to the Gentiles. Exactly. So these Jews really didn't like the idea of God blessing the Gentiles, did they? Mm -hmm. They should have done, because they should have read Psalm 67 amongst other Psalms. They should have got the idea from the Bible that they were designed to be a light to the Gentiles, weren't they? But these are more like Jonah than they are like Joseph. <laughs> and they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air. What good that did them, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And the tribune ordered, ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. Imagine being the tribune, mm -hmm. if you didn't speak Hebrew. And there's a bunch of people just shouting and arguing and mm -hmm. riot starting because this guy who's your prisoner has spoken to them in Hebrew and now they're just going mad. 
quite a moment, wouldn't it? Mm. But when they'd stretched him out for the whips, that would be like putting him stretched out either over a pole or between two poles or something like that so that he was ready to be flogged. When they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? The answer to that, of course, was no, it's mm -hmm. not. When the centurion heard this, he went to the tribune who said to him, What are you, what, what are you about to do for this man is a Roman citizen? It's not who said to him and said to him. What are you about to do for this man is a Roman citizen? So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. The tribune answered, I bought this citizen for a ship for a large sum. Paul said, But I am a citizen by birth. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, if you received your citizenship like the tribune did, paying a lot of money for it, um, that was hard and it made you a very special person to have Roman citizenship gave you all these rights and privileges mm. but to be born as a Roman citizen really meant that you were privileged mm. so those who were about to examine him verse 29 withdrew from him immediately and the tribune also was afraid, for he realised that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him. Now, if only they knew, because, I mean, Paul was actually a citizen of a far more important mm. country than Rome, wasn't he? Mm. Paul was a citizen of heaven mm. and a child of the King of Kings. They had a law that it wasn't legal to flog a Roman citizen in that way. And Roman citizens were not supposed to be crucified ever. And, and so there were these laws about how Roman citizens could be punished or what have you. There were great privileges. Have you, I wonder if you've ever thought about that. It's just, and we, we have privileges, don't we, as British citizens or... You're an American citizen as well. You know, it gives you certain privileges. If you go to some countries, they would treat you in a certain way. In some places you'd probably get killed for being yeah. an American citizen. But um, <laughs> in, other, in other places, people would be really respectful of you mm -hmm. because you're an American citizen or because you're a British citizen. Mm -hmm. It gives you certain privileges, a bit like this. However... Have you ever thought that, in a far greater way, we ought to treat every single Christian with the most incredible care and dignity? Why? Well, because they are a citizen of heaven. They they're actually they they are actually born into a family now as reborn into Christ's family they're actually born into a family with connections to God mm. think of it as, uh, you, you got to say you know would you treat the child of a mighty king badly you'd be foolish if you did wouldn't you Imagine if you got married and someone treated you really badly. How would I feel about that? Do you think I'd be upset with him? Or do you think I'd have a few words with him? Um, you mm. think it would go you think it would go very badly for him, do you? Because <laughs> I love you and I'd want to protect you and if someone was treating you badly I'd want to really take them to task, wouldn't I? So imagine the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Heavenly Father. Is he going to be okay with people treating his children badly? 
Now he allows it, doesn't he? He allows persecution. He's going to punish those evildoers. Boy, oh boy, are they in trouble when they treat the child of a king badly. And, and can I say this? Look, are you married to a Christian? Are your parents Christians? Are your children Christians? You better treat them well. Because you're dealing with a child of the king. You mess with them, you're messing with him. It's a good thought, isn't it? I'm not sure how much it's got to do with this, but <laughs> it's a good thought. Sorry. <laughs> kind of strayed there. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we pray that you'd... Um, are we done? You didn't read the last Did I not read it? Verse. Or did I or not did read? You not, did you read the last verse? No. Verse 30. Sorry. Where's verse 30? That's the last one. Okay. <laughs> so tough. Right, here we go. But on the next day, desiring to know the real reason why he was being accused by the Jews, he unbound him and commanded the chief priests and all the council to meet. And he brought <coughs> Paul down and set him before them. Lord, we thank you for to today. Thank you for the food for our souls here. We pray that you'd help us to grapple with it rightly and we ask you to please teach us how to understand it well. And, um, Lord, teach us how to rightly interpret your word better. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm sorry if I messed that up. I'm not sure it I'm not sure in my own head whether that was a legitimate application or not right now, but I'm going to say good night and I'll see you tomorrow. <coughs> and you'll have to um, judge for yourselves <laughs> at the moment. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. <laughs>